Hello, I'm Dr. Maury Markman from City of Hope, and I want to discuss a, a, a very interesting paper and a, a very important concept, in my opinion, in the area of uh, clinical trials of anti-cancer drugs. The paper uh, that I'm referring to was recently published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, and it's entitled Optimal Treatment Duration of Bevacizumab as Frontline Therapy for Advanced Ovarian Cancer, AGO OVCAR OVAR-17, Boost, Genetico, OV-11-8, NGOT, OV-15, Open Label Randomized Phase three Trial. Clearly, there were many groups that participated in this particular study. The reason I want to emphasize this study is that it is a follow-up trial that answered a critical question that was not addressed in the two definitive trials published in the New England Journal of Medicine many years ago regarding the role of bevacizumab and the frontline management of ovarian cancer. And these two studies previously published, the evidence was very clear that it did adding bevacizumab to carboplatinum plus paclitaxel and then continuing bevacizumab as a maintenance substantially improved progression-free survival in the frontline management of advanced ovarian cancer. This is great. Obviously, a very important advance for our patients found to be in this clinical setting. The problem was that there was an endpoint to the use of bevacizumab built into the trial, actually in both trials, where the patients received bevacizumab for a total of 15 months as maintenance, and then the maintenance therapy was stopped. Nothing wrong with that. Very appropriate. Obviously, the investigators, when they designed the trial, did not know the outcome. The problem was, when the results became available, the obvious next question arose. Would there be benefit to patients if they continued beyond the 15 months of receiving bevacizumab. For example, if they received two and a half years, four years, or perhaps continued the bevacizumab indefinitely. That question, that critical question in patient management was not able to be answered. Clearly, if a patient had excessive toxicity, got tired of the therapy, there'd be very reasonable reasons to stop. But from the point of view of optimal efficacy, both progression-free survival benefits and overall survival benefits, might it be better to continue beyond the 15 months? Well, in the study that I just noted, published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, that question was addressed and definitively answered. In this trial, patients were randomized to standard treatments of carboplatin and paclitaxel with bevacizumab given for 15 months as the control arm and in the experimental arm, same chemotherapy, same bevacizumab. However, it was given for 30 months, assuming acceptable toxicity, in the experimental arm. And the results were very clear. There was no benefit in either progression-free survival or overall survival for the patient population receiving up to 30 months of bevacizumab compared to the standard of care arm giving the bevacizumab for 15 months. And therefore, it is very appropriate to conclude the trial showed, and critically, future conversation with patients, that giving bevacizumab for 15 months, along with carboplatin and paclitaxel as frontline therapy of uh, ovarian cancer, should be remain the standard of care, that there is no benefit even if the patient is doing well, tolerating therapy well, of continuing the bevacizumab. It, of course, adds potential toxicity, obviously time and effort, and certainly cost, with no benefit to that patient, or at least to the population of patients that were studied, um, and therefore uh, should not be considered a treatment option outside of possibly another trial to examine different kinds of questions. I thank you for your attention. This is an interesting and important study, an important follow-up study asking and answering a very critical, clinically related, very prob uh, a pragmatic 
type of a clinical trial. I thank you for your attention.